T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Ignition and the dock of lights. Flight off on transition to ascent ops, ground operators please. Transition to ground, channel for passing. Vehicle supersonic. Max Q. Man, you can see the atmosphere thinning. You really can. That plume expansion there. That's beautiful. Should be coming up on Miko here. Two plus two minutes. Thirty seconds. God, the way that that comes back together, it's literally the exhaust gases bouncing off the atmospheric pressure and then coming back together. Continuing to go down range here. Two and a half minutes after Miko. liftoff. Coming up on stage separation. Miko. Stage ignition. Chamber pressure looks nominal. separation have a view from the vehicle here you can see the fairings jettisoned yep otherwise you couldn't see the earth <laughs> the limb of the earth in the background little bit of motion there but now we're into that uh, longer second stage burn the lightning doing its job to get that horizontal velocity going around the earth And there is that aft-facing view in the background there where the rocket just took off from. Here you can see the booster is no longer behind the rocket. I don't think we can see it in this shot. I suddenly wonder if that little dot up there is it. But this is the second stage, looking backwards at the engine on the second stage. Looks like some of the trackers are having a little bit of difficulty keeping it in frame there. It's really interesting how clear the exhaust is here. But once again, going to 
Stay with it. We are going to come up on an expected comms blackout. We're going to try to share with you the views here from the vehicle as long as we have them. The comms blackout is uh, expected, but it's also a little estimated. So if the feed cuts out a few seconds before the exact timing that we were we were talking through, that's that might be nominal. Yeah. How you doing, Morgan? I'm doing great. Sorry, I'm being handed things. <laughs> and I can only focus on one thing at a time. Uh, yeah, I'm doing great. Uh, that was a beautiful launch. And uh, I just love watching these camera views. Yeah. It was a little tough there with the marine layer. Uh, we had a lot of bloom on the ground. A little tough to see the rocket lifting off. I love that we kicked it off with the engine shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we just kept it with the engine shot as they sort of exited that uh, blast camera down in the trench itself. Or I guess right under the engines. But Lightning and Stage 2 continuing on with the propulsion here. Yeah, again, we're expecting to burn this engine until T plus 8 minutes and 28 seconds. Right. That's when we expect Seiko. So another two and a half minutes, roughly, in this burn. Yeah. Yeah. And again, here, this phase of flight is all about gaining velocity around the planet, right? First stage got us up out of the atmosphere. It got us sort of uh, away from the ground a little bit. And here, we're basically flying sideways. See this question a lot, like, oh, why did the rocket turn sideways? And then look like, from my perspective, it was going back down to the water. Well, the Earth is round. It was going around <laughs> the Earth, over the horizon. That's exactly what the lightning engine is doing here, pushing that stage and the payload I like this. Look, we got both cameras. Oh, nice. On around the planet. Yeah, orbit is basically just c falling constantly and just and missing. Missing, yeah. yeah. Coming up on T plus seven minutes. We're also listening in to Mission Control now, so if any callouts come from Mission Control, you will get them directly from there. That really is just a cool shot. Like you can see, you can even see like it's headed south, and the sun was rising. Mm -hmm. to the, like if you were on the rocket, the west would have been the left-hand side of the rocket, and there you can see the Earth a little bit illuminated there, and then a little bit darker on the right-hand side. You can see the sun reflecting off of the rocket itself. Yep. But about seven and a half minutes, and coming up in just about a minute, we're expecting that Seco second engine cutoff. Again, we may not have views all the way up to that. We will uh, see. We're going to share you share the views with you as long as we have them. But let's see here in about another 30 seconds whether we get those views the entire time. And then remember, the payload deploy is not expected to be seen live here. The payload deploy yes. isn't happening until a while after Seco. Yes, so... Seco happens again at about eight and a half minutes, coming up here in a couple seconds. And then we'll see uh, our plan comes blackout a little after nine minutes. Payload deploy, payload deploy will happen somewhere around, I think, 12. Right. Just, I'm watching the flicker of the second Seco. stage engine there. Mm -hmm. And had the Seco call out from Mission Control, and you could also see the engine shut down. Expected LOS at BTRS in 60 seconds. And rapidly approaching that expected LOS, like we talked about before liftoff. Back in Mission Control, you can see everyone focused on their consoles. I think the callout was uh, assessing data. Oh, yeah. Um, I When I run tests and things, I wish I have more than three monitors. I, s I <laughs> usually see a bunch of flack for people having three monitors right. in the control room. But you're actually looking at a lot of data at once. Right. Uh, you've got the GUI on one. You've got you know, all your plots on another, you've got cameras on another, and then sometimes I want to forth for another, <laughs> another monitor full of data because <laughs> there's just so much to look at at one time. Right.
Now coming up on T plus 10 minutes. We are gonna have some replays for you coming up here of the liftoff cameras we didn't show live. And also we'll talk how you can keep up to date with the mission status here. So now's the time when we can ask, if you were out at home, did you step outside during liftoff and were you able to see that? If you're over there in LA or San Diego, over in Phoenix, Arizona, maybe, all the way over to Albuquerque, let us know in the chat, did you catch any information? Did you catch any shots you, of right, that right. launch? And I think we just heard the LOS there. And tag us on social media if you did. All right. So folks, that is the views that we are able to share that we have because we are now in that comms blackout. And as we discussed earlier, because of the uh, long delay before we're expected to get that signal back, and then the priority order of downloading the data, getting the telemetry first, and then getting any video that's able to come down of payload deploy, that's not going to happen for almost another hour, eh, hour and 20 minutes. So we will not plan to stay live through that. But as a quick reminder, you can keep up with what the mission status is by following along on social media. Best place might be the Firefly main website where you can find all the social media accounts. But expect updates as to the mission status after we have get, we've get uh, the folks here in Mission Control assessing the data that came down before that and then getting any data that comes down after the comms blackout ends in another 25 minutes or so. We're going to stand by for just a few more minutes to see if we have any updates for you. All right. The big thing here is uh, the data coming down, the teams refu reviewing the data that came down on the rocket. And we, I think our best possibility here is to start wrapping up and have y'all give you the good information on how to find on social media and on Firefly's website further mission updates. Firefly is going to provide an update on payload deployment within the next couple of hours. Mm -hmm. So stay tuned on X, the website, et cetera, et cetera. Now, looking ahead, there's a lot happening for Firefly through the rest of the year in there, Morgan. Yeah, we have a ton happening in the remainder of the year. So Flight 6, check mark. We're going to be continuing to work with our customer on that for the next you know, couple hours. And then Alpha Flight 7 is coming up pretty quick with uh, Lockheed Martin's Taxat in the next couple months. Uh, so that will be a dedicated mission again for Lockheed Martin, Alpha Flight 7. We also have uh, Victus Hayes, which is a mission coming up soon. Uh, Alpha will be launching another U.S. Space Force uh, responsive space mission. So uh, kind of a follow-on to Victus Knox. Victus Knox was our Flight 3 uh, for Alpha, and it was a rapid response. You get a call and you have to launch or be prepared to launch within 24 hours. Right. So we're, Victus Hayes is kind of a follow-on to that. Uh, we also have Elytra Mission 1 coming up here pretty quick. Uh, so our first on-orbit Elytra mission will be later on this year. Uh, Blue Ghost Mission 2, which I actually have. Let's oh, yeah. Prop. Let's see if I can move <laughs> it without... Ah, he the can't. duck. Without the duck. Uh, but yes, um, putting it in the right spot, maybe. That's a you may have to hold that one up. <laughs> the table's down the low. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Blue Ghost Mission 2. Uh, we'll be launching BGM 2 as early as 2026. Right. Uh, this one will be going to the far side of the moon, uh, and it will also include operation in lunar orbit with Elytra. Uh, so, yeah, we're making really good progress on manufacturing and test right now uh, for BGM 2. Right. Uh, and not only with Blue Ghost, Eldra, Alpha, all of that going on, we're still making, you know, crazy headway with MLV. So MLV's neck deep in, you know, our qualification and, and uh, flight builds. We're going to be testing that pretty quick. So, yeah, it's just kind of all coming to a head. We had uh, Miles Gray on the show yesterday talking through some of the MLV progress. Uh, MLV is the medium launch vehicle, yes. much larger than Alpha. Um, that is currently in production. I mean, there are segments, there are engine mount areas, the main tanks are being, or the qualification tanks are being made yeah. out there at Briggs. It's kind of crazy because um, 
MLV is a lot of what I've been working on, specifically the tanks, obviously. Uh, and it's kind of hilarious to walk through building six and you see alpha, which, you know, you get used to a six foot diameter rocket. It's pretty big. And then you look to your left and you look up at MLV. It's like about 14 feet diameter rocket. It's so much bigger. It almost makes alpha look like a toy. Right. So yeah, it's, it's a definitely a big step up. It's a, it's a totally different ball game, but folks that is going to end our live coverage for today.